Hey, do you know what the third most abundant mineral found in humans is? Copper. But we don't talk about it as much. We talk a little bit about zinc a lot, especially when it comes to the immune system or during times where people get colds a lot. And having a zinc to copper ratio of eight to one is very important. But we don't talk about how much copper is needed. It actually is responsible for up to 17 enzymatic factors and functions inside the body. I mean, check out some of this, okay? Because most of it is related to oxidative stress, immune system, even neurotransmitter health. So if you are struggling with things like depression, could be linked to a copper deficiency. And oftentimes when we talk about anemia, we link it to iron problems, but it could be copper as well. So I want to share a few of these 17 enzymatic functions here before we dig into this awesome training on why you might care about how much copper you have in your daily nutrition, okay? So it's responsible for cellular health. It's responsible for scavenging free radicals or oxidative damage in the body. It helps convert dopamine to norepinephrine. It helps with brain processing. Uh, it helps actually increase the strength of your blood vessels, I should say. So a deficiency would actually decrease that. It helps with tendon strength, bone health, and then several other things related to like your nerve and your nervous systems, okay? And so your myelin or your myelin sheath, which is the protection of your nerve cells, okay? So we're gonna dig into that. And if you are experiencing any types of signs of immune health, depression, anxiety, bone health problems, muscle problems, nervous system problems, copper may be something to consider. And I want to do this short training to help you out. Okay. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Troy Rice. I'm an integrative medicine practitioner and naturopath trained in several different disciplines, including functional breathing and brain health. Okay. And we talk about all of these things on the channel including 60 second health tips. I would encourage you to check out, go to the channel, type in a particular area of health, you know, you name it, fasting or whatever you want, and you'll find videos about that, okay? So let's dig into the training here. All right, so copper, did you know that anemia, often known from a scientific term as chlorosis, can be caused by a copper deficiency, not just an iron deficiency, okay? Copper improves the ability of red blood cells to transport oxygen and nutrients, okay? So why might you care? There are several different risk factors uh, related to copper deficiencies found in the body. I'm going to talk about three key ones here, okay? So the first one we talked about a little bit, which is copper anemia connection, all right? So both iron and copper are absorbed in the upper small intestines, and Hepcidin, which is what controls the absorption of the iron in the body, okay, is the expression is decreased in a copper deficient diet leading to an iron deficiency. So if you feel like you have anemia and you've been, you know, communicated about uptaking your iron absorption, or maybe you're not absorbing iron as you should, whether that's, you know, heme iron, maybe it's nutrition related to what type of iron you're bringing in. Heme iron is often more found in like animal proteins, okay, and even, you know, eggs, fish and poultry and things like that. But it could be related to a copper deficiency, which is absolutely needed for that absorption of that iron, okay? Second, iron overload. So if it's not being uptaked and utilized, a lot of times that iron can actually bottle up inside the liver, okay? And that could lead to fatty liver disease, okay? So, if you think about that, not only do you have uh, anemia, uh, potential problems related to copper, but you could also have a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease problem caused through copper deficiencies, okay? Number three, and again, there are several, but these are some of the top risk factors, okay? Cardiovascular disease, which is still the number one leading cause of death, particularly in the United States, okay? So a copper deficiency reduces SOD, all right, and then increases cholesterol triglycerides, increases glucose, and can cause iron overload, which we talked about, 
And then all of these co correlate to cardiovascular disease through oxidative stress, metabolic syndrome, atherosclerosis, and organ damage, or and like we talked about, most specifically your liver. I mean, your liver is, is actually processing your blood and cleaning the blood every six to eight minutes when healthy, okay? It also helps not only with the synthesis or the detoxification pathways and the, you know, phase one and phase two, it actually helps with converting your uh, free T4, which is your non-active form of thyroid hormone to activated type of T3, but many people miss that. And so if your liver is compromised, it could actually lead to a problem with your thyroid. And so your liver does so many things uh, for the body. And in this case, you know, it's also showing signs for linkage to cardiovascular disease. Okay. So now that we covered those three risk factors, let's talk about signs and symptoms of deficiency in copper in excess, because if for some reason you're getting too much copper in the body, and then it's throwing your ratios off of zinc to copper, you could see signs as well. So I want to cover both of those sides of the spectrum. Okay, here we go. Signs of deficiencies. You're talking about anemia, atherosclerosis, demyelination of the nerves and the nerve cells, uh, diarrhea, edema, which is like a pitting uh, in the legs or the ankles where you push on it and it feels like excess fluid, which a lot of times edema is also related to your liver, okay? Fatigue, hair loss, impaired collagen formation, so absolutely needed for that as well. Loss of hair color, loss of hormone production, and then osteoporosis, all studied correlated signs uh, related to copper deficiency. How about excess, okay? Acne, adrenal in inefficiencies, allergies, alopecia, anemia, fatigue, fear. So a lot of the neurotransmitter uh, disconnects, okay? Bone fractures, headaches, migraines, hemorrhages, mind racing, mood swings, MS, myocardial infarction, uh, nausea, heart disease, hyperthyroidism, hypoglycemia, infections, inflammation, so many of these things. I'll call out just a few others, but please download the free guide below. A high LDL, cholesterol, cancer, cystic fibrosis, okay, strokes, and even things like UTI. And then I like to list things that are synergistic, so things that work with copper in the body. And one of the major ones are proteins. And when I say proteins, I mean amino acids. So you know, there are nine essential, there are 11 non-essential, so 20 complete amino acid proteins. Copper is something that helps with synthesizing and utilizing those amino acids in the body, okay? So again, why should you even care about this? Well, listen to how many of these functions within the body that copper is actually used, okay? So in a basic sense, it's used for energy production, female reproductive system, and blood formation, but what does that mean down to a little bit more of a functional health level, okay? So it's involved in the circulatory system, so the structure of your blood vessels, your aorta, and your heart muscle. It's responsible for your blood, which is the formation of hemoglobin. It's responsible for helping the nervous system, so maintaining the myelin sheaf around your nerves. Reproduction system, it's essential for fertility and the menstrual cycle, okay? It's responsible for the endocrine system, so the synthesis of stimulating your neurotransmitters. It's responsible for muscular and skeletal health supporting, okay, bone and connective tissue structure. It helps with immune system, which is necessary for immune health. It's also helping, like we talked a lot about, for your skin, your hair, your nails, and your pigment. And then lastly, energy production, mostly your electronic transport uh, chain, okay? So, all of those functions is actually helpful when you have the right amount of copper in the body. But what does the right amount of copper look like? So what's interesting to call out here is the RDA, the recommended daily or dietary allowance, is anywhere between 0 0.9 milligrams to 1.3 milligrams per day. Then the Food and Nutrition Board has made recommendations that say, well, that we're thinking 1.5 to 3 milligrams per day. This is the section that I really want you to hone in on and focus on, which is, where well, they've done a study, and if you are balanced, so if you get testing done, you can do a simple minerals and metals test, and I'll provide that link below on this training, and you're at an optimal level, then you could consider eating, uh, you know, one to 1.25 milligrams per day for maintenance, okay? 
If you're deficient, you may want to consider 2.6 milligrams per day. And if you are severely deficient, you might want to consider 3 to 6.4 milligrams a day just to get you back up to the baseline and balance those ratios, okay? And so that's all scientific evidence-based through clinical studies. And so I don't want to just leave you with that. What I really want to leave you with is what can you do about it, right? What can you do about it besides, well, should I take a copper supplement for ease? But here are copper-rich foods and the milligrams per, you know, ounces or half cup or depending on the food that you could actually consume in a given day. And you could actually amount to that particular recommended daily value or those deficient levels or severely deficient levels, okay? So let's talk about that. If you're shooting for one milligram or higher foods that you're combining to get to those higher levels, here are the foods that you can consider, okay? Beef liver, it's three ounces of it is 12.4 milligrams. That's a ton, right? Mollusk, three ounces of it, 6.4 milligrams. Oysters, three ounces, 4.8 to 6 milligrams. Uh, wing beans, one cup cooked, 5.2 milligrams. Lentils, one cup cooked, 2.5 milligrams. Kidney beans, one cup, two milligrams. Buckwheat, one cup cooked, 1.9. Seaweed, in this case, I want to call out spirulina, which one ounce of it is 1.7. And then cacao powder, which is 1.1 milligrams for one ounce. Okay, so you consider those. Now, there's a full expansive list here, and I want to encourage you to comment below if you're looking for that. I didn't want to talk about all of that. And if you set up a consult, I'll talk you through ways you can actually build this into foods you actually care about, and we can customize a plan for you. Uh, but I want to call out a few things here. So let's dive into 0 0.5 to 1 milligram. You're talking pork, beef, spleen. You're going to notice a lot of these are organ meats that are found to have the highest amount of copper, okay? And if that's not you, then that's when you want to consider some of these others, okay? So spices, uh, potatoes, thyme, mushrooms, cashews, crab, sunflower seeds, black pepper, and turkey are all great. And then if you're looking for smaller amounts that you can also, again, customize together within a given day to add up, dark chocolate. So if you're a chocolate lover, uh, there you go, right? 70 to 85% preferably to get your 0 0.5 milligrams. Peanut butter, if you're going to consume peanut butter, I would highly encourage, and I've done videos on this, um, Valencia peanuts have been found to have the least amount of mold toxicity found in it. Also pesticides as well, because a lot of your peanut fields, especially in the United States, are grown in the same fields that cotton is, which is heavily sprayed with things like glyphosate. Okay. So you're looking for Valencia peanuts, organic, if you can, I've done videos on that. So if you're a peanut butter lover, look for that on the label. Radishes are great game meat, like, you know, deer meat, things like that. Pork hearts, Brazil nuts, which are also heavy in selenium, are amazing. Tofu, beef kidney, beef heart, ham, veal, and pecans, flax seeds, and almonds also have around 0.3 milligrams per one ounce as well. So as of every training, you know, I hope that was helpful. What I'd like to share here at the end is like, if you are in a place where you know, if you're just looking to balance out minerals like copper and all that, that is amazing. Hopefully this guide kind of helps you to get to a certain point. You can consider the testing. But if you're really in a place where you are struggling with your health, you're working with your primary care physician, but you're still struggling, maybe they have you on prescription drugs. They're maybe masking some of the pain, but you know that it's not treating the root cause. What we do here at Rice Wellness Center is actually help you dig in and find the underlying root cause behind that. We use precision medicine labs. We use different uh, ways of customizing precision health, precision protocols. And then we teach you a foundation of personalized wellness, which we call your wellness suit. And it covers all of these foundational pillars because we believe changing your lifestyle habits will lead you to lifelong wellness. And we want you to create a customized plan that matches you so that you can get back to the health and wellness you deserve, okay? So besides digging into the root cause, we help you build foundation around your diet, nutrition, your exercise, your stress, your toxin removals, okay? There's over 100,000 man-made chemicals out there. Uh, recovery, like what is your sleep health, your HRV, your, your REM and your DEEP look like, your emotional health and your vibration, your sleep, and then supplements when needed to help balance the body, okay? And so if that is you, I want to encourage you to, to reach out, set up a consult with us. 
Let us listen to where you're coming from. Tell us your full story if you're open to it. And then we help you build a plan that actually helps you at a personalized level. Okay. So please access this free guide below. There's links as well as a de-stress guide that you can uh, leverage and then links to supplements, protocols, and precision labs. Okay. So thank you for joining this training on copper and more trainings to come. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time.